champion. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. From Sunrise, Florida, the time has come for the Strike Force World Welterweight Championship. It's Diaz versus Jaromskis in the main event of the evening. I consider it a great honor to be fighting against the greatest fighters in the world. I'm here to uphold that image. Fight is fight. If you decide to fight, you need to be ready for everything. For me, every single fight is very important. This is uh, like more important because the first fight in America and for Bell is very important. I don't know much about him yet. I know he kicks people in the face. For Nick, it's a little bit for me, it will be more difficult to land kicks because his hands are like this. Diaz is a character. He's really fast, you know, he throws kicks. I, the thing is, is I don't back away from people. I want to show people how good I am, what real fight is. I just feel like I'm gonna go fight and put on a show for my fans, take care of my family, represent my team. That's what I'm in it for. Marius Zoromskis put himself on the MMA map last year, winning the dream of welterweight Grand Prix, becoming the Japanese-based promotion's first welterweight kingpin in the process. Well, now he has his sights set on mining Strikeforce gold. Please welcome to the cage one of the world's top welterweights, the exciting knockout artist, Marius Zoromskis. He's a native of Lithuania who now makes his home in England, trains with London shoot fighters. He's in the midst of a career high five fight winning streak, which includes three consecutive wins via highlight reel head kick knockout. You know, the fashion in which this guy's been finishing his fights lately has drawn him favorable comparisons to the Pride era Mirko Krokop. And you first got to see Zoromskis in his adopted home of England, where he enjoyed a lot of success with a defunct cage rage promotion. This guy is excitement personified. He really was back then in the cage rage days. And I always thought that spunky is a word that pops into my mind when I think of Mario Zoromskis. This overachieving Lithuanian brings a spectacular array of techniques to the table, including flying knee and head kick knockouts, but can he fight on the ground? We may never not know that because Zoromskis is next to impossible to keep on the floor. Yeah, he's never actually been there, so we don't <laughs> really know. But he does have a key to winning. That's key to the cage. It's going to be his head kick. I don't think it's going to be the finishing head kick that's knocked everybody out, but I do think it's going to set up body kicks, it's going to set up combinations, and it's going to allow him to twirl around and get his heels going for some beautiful turning kicks, of which he's been very successful. Good. I'm going to check you out one last time, okay? Nick Diaz is without a doubt a polarizing figure in the sport, but love him or hate him, one thing is certain, he is one of MMA's best athletes. And now, here is the world-renowned Gracie Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Nick Diaz. When you talk about his level of Athleticism. Here is a guy who is a veteran of over 100. Think about that. 100 triathlons. He's a Caesar Gracie BJJ black belt, enjoying the biggest success of his career. Just like his opponent, he has won five in a row. And tonight he is hoping to finally realize his full potential and become a world champion. And he is more than happy as you see him get ready with his younger brother, Nate Diaz, the UFC lightweight. Nick Diaz is very happy to finally be back at 170 pounds. Yeah, he really is. I mean, this is the perfect way for him and Nick Diaz in many ways is uh, he's, he's something to everyone but above all he's a martial artist this proud black belt was first introduced to the arts with Aikido at the age of four and having risen to the top of the sport of MMA with a combination of world-class jiu-jitsu and professional level boxing Diaz still makes time to polish his nunchuck skills and to play his favorite video game Street Fighter <laughs> well you gotta love Diaz he comes to fight and he really really brings it uh, his key to winning this match tonight is his single leg takedown. I think it's a danger for him to stand up. I think it's going to be a big risk. I think if he gets this young man to the mat, he's going to be able to play the game he wants to play, Jiu-Jitsu. Let's go to the tail of the tape for tonight's main event.
Well, it goes back to the condor-like reach of Nick Diaz. Look at that, he's got a five-inch reach advantage on Zoromskis. If he can get that jab going, if he can establish that range, I don't know, it's gonna be fireworks. Here with the official introductions now is the one and only Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Bank Atlantic Center as Strikeforce and Showtime present the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Rockstar Energy Drink, bigger, better, faster, stronger, party like a rock star. Tonight's action is sanctioned by the Florida State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Ramiro Ortiz, Vice Chairman Don Bowen, Executive Director Tom Malloy. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Strikeforce World Welterweight Championship. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and MMA fans joining us around the world, live from Sunrise, Florida, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner. Specializing in kickboxing and wrestling, his record stands at 13 wins, three losses, with 11 of his wins coming by way of knockout. From London by way of Lithuania, here is the international MMA star and the dream welterweight champion known as the White Mare, Marius Zaromski. His opponent ready to go across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. As one of MMA's outstanding young versatile fighters raised in the traditions of boxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, his record stands at 20 wins, seven losses, and one no contest. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time welterweight champion from Stockton, California, introducing MMA's bad boy, Nick. Our third man of the cage, now to give instructions, Troy Waugh. Let's go, Nick, you're crazy. Fuck him, all right? Fighters, center of the ring. Gentlemen, this is the main event. I want a good, clean fight. I will not tolerate anything less. Let's touch gloves, go back to the corner. Let's get ready to rock and roll. Scintillating stare down prior to the opening bell of this, the main event of Strike Force Miami for the vacant Strike Force welterweight title. Nick Diaz, four of his last five wins via form of knockout. While Maria Soromska is looking to become the first fighter ever to hold major titles in Japan and North America at the same time. Judge, are you ready? Judge, are you ready? Judge, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? Five five-minute rounds to determine history at Strike Force and without warning, Zorovskis quickly goes to the kicks, tanks. Diaz with a quick combination, and Diaz now with that reach finds Zorovskis as well. Overhand left by Diaz, already hurting. Oh, 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 oh. Nick Diaz finding the range on that left hand already. Man, a slug fest early on here. We did not anticipate anything less, and Zorovskis kicks Diaz, who doubles over looking for the single leg. He took a big knee right before that single. Like I think it convinced him to jump on that takedown. In many ways, Zoromskis very similar in his style to Kung Lee, the former Strike Force middleweight champion. Frank, you were in the cage with Nick Diaz not too long ago. What impressed you the most about the Stockton bad boy? Uh, he just has weird angles of punching, and he's consistently repetitive in combinations with his hands. They don't hurt, but they scramble your brain and they confuse you. So if they don't hurt, how do they scramble your brain? I don't know. They don't hurt. They just keep confusing me. I think because he keeps throwing punches and bunches. Now, Nick Diaz usually 
see his, he spent his whole career fighting guys in orthodox stance, but Zoromskis is a southpaw, didn't have any problem coming in with that left hand. Both of them southpaws in this fight, and Diaz now working away on the legs of Zoromskis, doing the homework, wanting to make sure, hey, if you're going to deliver that kick, it's going to be a lot heavier, and it's going to hurt a lot more than you're accustomed to. Zoromskis seems frozen in this position, yep. and he's getting whacked by that knee, and that's going to hurt his chances to move around and deliver those kicks. That nope. leg is going to blow up terribly, and his biggest skill set, which is movement and versatility, is going to be gone. I know one thing, every time Nick Diaz is on the card, the CompuStrike employees cringe just because of the sheer volume of strikes this guy delivers. Well, this simple strategy of beating up that leg, I think it's going to pay huge dividends if we get out of this first round. Well, he's pinned Zorovskis against the fence. And Zorovskis definitely has to circle away, alleviate the pressure being put on him now by Diaz, taking him, looking to run the pipe. Uh-oh, uh -oh. this is not good. Oh, Zorovskis backs away, however. Left hand connects by Diaz, using that reach again. Zorovskis has to close the gap and quick. That short strike hurt him, stumbled Zorovskis a little bit. Now again, Diaz unloading the lefts. And he's landing them. And Diaz always throws caution to the wind. I think he's figured it out. Stop, stop. He recovered stop. awful three, quick, three. though. Walk the referee. The the I'm not going to tell you anything. Go. There's a warning here. So Romskis, in some ways, threw caution to the wind and just gutted out the knockdown. And there's blood now dripping from the face of Nick Diaz. And Zorompkis now smells the blood, beginning to time himself, but Diaz still beating him in the punch because of the reach advantage. This is an absolute war. We did not anticipate anything less than Zorompkis. There was Diaz timing it, catching the kick. Timing, catching that single leg. This is a dangerous game for him. Well, the partisan crowd here in the United States in Miami cheering Nick Diaz. And in his illustrious career, Diaz has only lost via form of knockout twice. They go to the fence. They go to the fence. While Zoromskis has never been submitted. So an interesting tale there as the right hand tattoos the face of Zoromskis, who eats it and delivers one of his own. But now he's got to find a way. He's getting tattooed here. A stuck at the end of Diaz's punches. I have been there. It does not feel good. It's exciting for the fans, but I think these guys are giving the respective corners fits. It's unbelievable, the lack of defense. Zorowskis is trying to get his way through, but he's losing the boxing match, hoping for the hammer of Thor to drop again. Well, Diaz has worked boxing with the likes of Andre Ward. Oh, uppercut! And that jacked the job, Zorowskis! A oh, big body shot there. Diaz crushing it. Nick 
Diaz recover. These little short shots, they're letting Nick recover. And you got to stay on top of Nick if you're going to hurt him. He's in too good a shape to let off the hook. Without a doubt, Diaz belongs at 170 pounds. This guy's physical attributes are amazing. Amazing. When it, and when he comes in with punches, like, look at this finishing combination. Dipping left, dipping right, uppercut, hook. I mean, what a display of boxing. And look at Zerovkis, his toast. He's looking for literally a place to fall down. I love the way Nick just punches, throwing caution to the wind, throwing defense to the wind. That little short right hook hit him right on the temple. Zerovkis done. He There's said he even chance. sparred with Mikkel Kessler. He's worked with Andre Ward. I mean, he takes his boxing very seriously, and it shows. The seventh first round victory of Nick Diaz's career. And now, here once again is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Four minutes, 38 seconds in round number one. Our referee in charge, Troy Waugh, stops the contest due to strikes. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is now the Strike Force World Welterweight Champion, Nick Diaz. She's a great jiu Pardon my language. Pardon my language. <laughs> He's learning some matters yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, Captain one. Cannabis may soon become Captain KO as he's standing by with Steven Quadros. Okay, Nick. Yeah. You usually keep your emotions under wraps when you talk to us, but this victory had to have some kind of a special place in your heart. No, I'm just ready to go home and eat, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Practice your nunchucks. Yeah, some nunchucking skills. Okay, but Zerom's because he came out there and he kind of initiated the firefight. Did you think that that was a disastrous plan? Uh, no, I knew he was going to uh, probably run and jump at me. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, so I prepared for that. I prepared for everything. That's so why I worked hard. My trainer here, Richard Perez, worked hard with my trainer. You know, he, he knows what to do to keep, me, keep my punches up and, uh, Gracie. you know, keep me training hard. Gracie. I need to thank uh, Caesar Gracie, uh, you know, Number one, Cesar Gracie Jiu Jitsu, my boy Jake Shields, and Gilbert Melendez, and my brother Nathan Diaz. He won his last fight. Something's going on out there, a little funny. You fans need to uh, step up and say something, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, Nick, on the undercard, we had Jay Haran, who won a fight against Joe Riggs, and he, he would like to challenge you for yeah, your that's, title. That's whatever, man, you know? You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I got to thank Dith uh, Dethrone Rockstar, Full Tilt, and EA Sports, uh, you know what I'm saying, for hooking me up. And, uh, I need to give a, a real special yeah, no, shout out to a Mike Solomon and Lodi. Uh, okay, Nick, congratulations. Chase Chevrolet, thank you very much, too. Two this was a great win for Nick Diaz, your new champion, and back to cage side. Sorry. Nick Diaz dazzles in Strike Force on a Saturday night as we take a look at these fight stats totals brought to you by CompuStrike. Well, Diaz beats him in every area. Standing leg kicks 98%. Talk about strikes landed 81%. Diaz punched his way to the championship. And I'm looking at the CompuStrike employees right now shaking their hands out. Like I say, he, they always get a workout when Nick Diaz is in a fight. And here we go one more time. This is how it all ended, Frank. A very short, clean, right hook. Diaz in position to deliver the championship blow, and he walks away your champion. Nick Diaz, strike force, welterweight champion, making history as a California-based promotion's first oh, title holder at 170 pounds. Yeah. All right, coming up in February, Showtime premieres Premium Television's first weekly series on America's number one spectator sport inside NASCAR.